need your um, definition packets also today. There's one quick little definition that you might need to add on there, but um, there are some tables of values that we're going to be using in the lesson today in there, and then you will definitely be relying on those for a lot of your answers. All right, so last week we briefly talked about a normal distribution curve. Um, there is a special type of normal distribution curve called a standard um, normal distribution curve. Um, this is the one where it looks very similar to our empirical rule that we talked about before. Your mean is zero on this curve and your standard deviation is one. So instead of um, plus one standard deviation now, your standard deviation is number one, number three, so on and so forth. Uh, properties of this curve are, first of all, then our standard deviations become those z-scores. Remember, a z-score is how far you are from the mean of any standard deviation. So if my z-score is 2, that means I'm 2 standard deviations to the right mean. So if my z-score is negative 1, it means I'm 1 standard deviation to the left mean. Uh, properties at the bottom here, the cumulative area, if your z-score is about negative 3.5, so um, when we say cumulative area, we mean area to the left. So up to, from left to right to that z-score is approximately zero. So if you have a z-score of three and a half or lower, we just say the cumulative area is zero. And then vice versa, if you have a positive three and a half z-score, we say the cumulative area to um, this point from left to right is one. The area under the curve is a total of one. The area, cumulative area to the mean, which is right in the middle here, is 0.5. Half of my data is to the left. Half of my data is to the right. We talked about that with like percentages before, if you remember with the empirical rule. Um, and then the cumulative area increases from left to right as the z score increases. All right, so um, what we're going to be doing, you have a table of values on your definition sheet. And actually, you have a few of them, but right now we're going to be looking at this table four. It's a standard normal distribution, and there's actually two pages of it. Um, one of them is for negative z-scores and the other is for positive z-scores. So you're going to need to kind of keep both of those out in front of you because if you're looking for a positive z-score, you're going to be looking on one side. If you're looking for a negative z-score, you're going to be looking on the other. By the way, this little fold-out guy here, this is in the back of your textbook. Um, it's something that you can rip out of the back of the textbook. Now you guys have to return your book, so you don't want to like lose this, but if you want like a nice hard stock version of all the formulas and tables and things, this is where all those formulas come from that I give you guys. It's in the back of your book, so it's um, right on there as well. All right, so uh, what we're going to use this for, go to the next slide here, is, I don't want to do that one yet. I'm going to do this one. Okay. So here's how we find something on our z-score table. So let's say I wanted to find the cumulative area, which means area to the left, of a z-score of 1.15. So in your table, you're going to find the positive z-scores, and then you're going to find the first two digits on your row going down. So for this one, we would be looking for 1.1 on the left side. And then you're just going to go over to the appropriate column that has the last digit. So for 1.15, you should be able to find a cumulative area of 0 0.8749, which means if I sketch this little normal curve here, here's my mean right in the middle, 1.15, maybe over there somewhere, that 0 0.8749 represents that area to the left of that z-score. That's what we're finding. Okay? All right, so let's do the next one. Negative 0.24. Okay, so on your table, go to the negative values. Negative 0.24. Where mine went? There it is. Um, so you're going to find negative 0.2 on the left, and then go over to 0.4, which I'm looking upside down. You should get 0 0.4052. Everybody find that okay? 
All right. Um, the next one on your paper, I know something kind of weird printed on top of that. I don't know where that came from. Is negative 2.19. So again, you're on the negative side of your chart. Find negative 2.1, and then go all the way over to 9, your last, or your first column, actually, 0 0.0143. You should find for that one. And then the last one is 2.375. Now, this one has an extra digit on it. Um, it's going to be, you're going to look between 2.37 and 2.38. So we're going to find the um, area for both of those, and then the value between them is like a midpoint. It's essentially the average of those two numbers. So if you find 2.37, positive 2.37, let's see what that gives me. Uh, 0.9911. And 2.38 is point. 9913, and then you can again average them, find the midpoint, it's basically the same thing, add them up, divide by two, right in the middle, 0.9912 would be the cumulative area up to that point. Okay? All right, um, how you can do this with your graphing calculator, um, and honestly, I really think it's easier with the table of values, but I'll show you how to do it in the calculator if you want to check something, if you're not sure how you're doing it at home. Let's see here. All right, so let's do that negative 0.241 first. So on your home screen, We're going to select that distribution menu that we used before, which is second VARS. Remember, we did this to graph the normal curve last week. And we're going to choose normal CDF, so number two. Now, it's asking for a lower z-score and an upper z-score. The upper z-score is the z-score that you're trying to find the cumulative area of, so negative 0.24 in this case. The lower z-score, um, I'm just going to use 10,000. Um, so we know that negative 3.5 and everything below that is essentially going to give us a zero, but I'm just going to pick a really low number. Okay, negative 1,000 would probably give you the same answer. And then we're doing this on our standard curve, so our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one. Those are just the defaults. You can leave them. And then go ahead and hit paste. And then enter and 0 0.4052, which is what we found earlier on the problem when we did it with the table. Everybody get that okay? 0 0.4052? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all right try um 1.15 same thing so we're gonna hit second bars normal cdf and then it saves your values so you guys don't have to remember them over and over again really the only thing that's changing from one to the next is that 1.15 for the upper value which is 1.15 in this case enter 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 uh, 0.8749 we're going to get for that one. Okay, and again, that's cumulative area to the left. Question in the calculator there? All right, so now we're going to do these ones together. For these, we want to find the area under the curve, and we're going to sketch what that area looks like. So my first one is negative 0.99. So negative 0.99, again, my mean is going to be right in the middle. There's my mean. Um, it's to the left of my mean about one standard deviation. So maybe about here-ish. Okay, we're just going to approximate where that's located at. And then everything to the left of that is what we're calculating the area of. And that's what the table of values does. It gives you the area to the left. So you're just going to find your negative 0.99. So look on the negative side of your z-score table, 0.99 and you should be able to find 
0.1611. If I have a negative z-score, my answer will always be what kind of number? Or it will be less than what, I guess I should say. If you have a negative z-score, your answer will always be left less than what? 0 0.5. 0 0.5, because it's to the left of the mean. And if you have a positive z-score, your answer would always be above 0.5, greater than 0.5. So you want to check that your answers are kind of reasonable for what we're seeing in this picture. Now the next one's a little different. The next one we want to find the area to the right of 1.06. So I'm going to draw it. Again, my mean's right in the middle there. 1.06, maybe just a little bit higher than one standard deviation away, somewhere like there. And the area to the right is what we're looking for. All right, so if I find 1.06 in my table, it'll give me the area to the left. So find your positive side, 1.0, and then go over to 6. You should find 0.8554 is to the left. So if I know 0.8554 is to the left, how do I get what's to the right? Well, what's the total area under the curve? One. So the total area, one, minus 0.8554 will give me the area to the left, which is 0.1446. It's essentially a complement. Instead of to the left, to the right. Complement is one minus. Okay, so we're going to see this with some probabilities pop up later on. That's where that's coming from. All right, last one we're going to do together. Find the area under the curve between two z values. So this time I have negative one and a half. Maybe like there. And then 1.25. Maybe like there. And we're finding the area between them. Okay. So a z value of 1.25 and I have a z value of negative 1.5. Let's find the area under the curve cumulative, cumulative to those points. So 1.25 in your table, 0.8944. If you find negative 1.5, negative 1.50, it's 0 0.0668. Okay. So from the far bar all the way to the left is 0.8944. From the closer bar all the way to the left is 0 0.668, 0 0.0668. How do I find the area between? What do I do with those numbers? What? Close. Subtract. We want to find the difference. We're going to take that 0.8944, so it's from that 1.25Z4 all the way down, and then just subtract off that extra little tail that we don't want on the left, which is the 0 0.0668. So it's going to be the larger minus the smaller, if you want to make a note to yourself on that one. If you're finding area between largest minus smaller, as far as your areas go. And I have no idea what that gives me off the top of my head. What? 8276. I'll take it. Good. Okay. Questions on that? All right. Um, the last three today are for you guys to try. I want you to change part A to negative 2.21 because we already did 1.06. So change part A to negative 2.21. I want a sketch of the area that you are calculating under the normal curve. And then I want you to calculate the right, the left, and the area in between, respectively, on each of these. And I'm going to have you guys come up to the board and put these answers up in a minute. All right, so I'll give you a couple minutes, work together. Use your table or your calculator. Table's probably a little bit faster to find the areas for these z-scores that you're looking for.